to talk about right hand technique, flat pick technique. The um, the it's never easy to back up from what, from the from the habits you've created and from the, the things you've got comfortable with. So the the better your technique is in the beginning, the better your results are in the end. It's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. It makes sense. Um, so if you can develop good picking technique, and this applies to the left hand too, we'll talk about that later. Um, from the get go, it's just easier than correcting any of your of your mistakes. I've I've had some things I've had to correct over the years that have um, caused some issues in my right hand, um, but I feel like at this point I'm kind of in the direction I need to be, and someone to see if I can help you get in the direction you need to be before you have to go correcting those mistakes I had to correct. The uh, first element about the flat pig is how do you hold it and uh, I've heard this goes back to the Nick Lucas instructional books from you know, early early century early part of the century and uh, I've also heard uh, um, Doc Watson describe that's where he learned how to hold his pick too so that should prove it works the, uh, this, the, the technique of holding this pick is when I look down over the top of my guitar if I don't see my thumbnail looking straight up at me, that means my pick angle's off to start with. So I'm looking down to see that my thumb is straight and running parallel to the strings. And my thumbnail's looking right back up at me. And at that point, my pick drops into place with the point towards the strings, but I, but I prefer my pick to point a little bit towards the fretboard. Um, it just gives it a little bit less of an abrasive manner and doesn't dig in as deep. Uh, to the strings, so you can get you can more get more fluid action across the, the strings. Your first finger curls in behind the pick, so when you look down, you're going to see the pick pointing at your strings, and you're going to actually see and that your fingers make an X pattern. Thumb in front, first finger curled behind, and this should be occurring in this first joint. So it's going to look something like this. Now that we're holding our pick correctly. <laughs> We're going to look at where do we hold this pick, what relationship to the guitar, and where would the pick land. And I've found that the premium space for both tone and playability happens right near the back edge of the sound hole, right, up, right above this decorative trim, essentially. And that's where you get the most response without it being too tense, which would happen back here above the bridge, or too loose and floppy, which happens up over top of the sound hole. So back here in this midsection. Gives you that most punch and response. Now as I'll throw in, as you, as you develop this technique and as you develop your right hand, you can gain more control over it. What you'll find is if you, you can actually slip forward and slip back on the strings to achieve a more balanced tone. Uh, the thinner strings are going to be brighter by nature. The, the bass strings, you know, darker by nature. So, if you, you, you can even think of it as this almost diagonal range that you'd play in. If you pull back a little bit, you get more piano uh, tone out of the bass string, just a more punchy tone. And if you, lean, if you move forward just a little bit, you've got a warmer sound. So it's a, it's a minor change, but it makes a big difference in the long run. Um, so as you develop and as you develop your comfort level with this, listen for your tone, listen to see what, what little bit of changes you need to make. It will go a long way towards an overall balanced sound.